So during my PhD research, I was working in Zambia on, on um, malaria transmission dynamics, and it was an area of very intense malaria transmission. And there was this mother comes running up to us, and she's carrying her son who's comatose um, with cere cerebral malaria. So we dropped what we were doing and, and got them to the, the nearest clinic, which was about an hour away down bumpy roads. Um, and so we we ended up um, getting there in time for the for the child's life to be saved. It really it really. Uh, brought things home for me as far as you know, moving from collecting mosquitoes to, to why we're doing this. Ebola, Zika, West Nile, Hantavirus. The headlines get a little more frightening every year with news about the latest outbreak. In the battle against infectious disease, we must get ahead. Keeping pace is not good enough. It's very hard to play catch up after something arrives and so if we have the opportunity to identify something more quickly or to, to develop some novel molecular diagnostics that can be used for surveillance immediately, that would put us at a tremendous advantage to curtailing the situation when, when, it, when it arrives. Colorado State University has a long history of research in infectious diseases. Uh, the programs go back 30-40 years and involve tuberculosis as well as some of the emerging diseases that are uh, present today and make the headlines, things like dengue, chikungunya, uh, Zika virus. Here at CSU we have the ability to study infectious disease vectors in the lab and in organisms ranging from mosquitoes all the way to camels and everything in between. So having all of this together really is a um, enormous and in many ways unparalleled resource. We are really driven to have an impact. That's what these investigators want to see. We bring tremendous expertise to work hand in hand with corporate and governmental agencies to achieve really fantastic things. What's important, I think, the expertise within the department and the size and scope of the research programs allow us to move fairly easily from one disease to another disease. So all these things at CSU really allow us to address that issue of emerging infectious diseases in a kind of cohesive way. We're present all the way from the beginning when the disease emerges to dealing with the disease, developing methods to treat the disease, even manufacturing uh, countermeasures or vaccines that can be used uh, in those therapeutic approaches. IDRC is a unique facility that brings together the expertise and the infrastructure that's needed to answer important questions, to come up with solutions that be, can be carried to the marketplace and truly have an impact through diagnostics, therapeutics, and prevention of infectious disease. CSU has a very diverse abilities through the IDRC. From studying emerging pathogens, we can um, discover them, identify them, sequence them on um, a very short time frame. We can develop novel diagnostics, um, we can conduct animal experiments, we can conduct transmission experiments and vectors. So the, my group is, is especially good at doing sequencing and computational analyses, so that's um, what we bring to the table is the ability to very quickly um, determine the genomic sequence of a new pathogen. We have uh, partnerships that extend from around the world to across the parking lot uh, with the CDC that is literally across the parking lot from our location here. That co-location and the activities that are going on between the organizations being so related really fosters research and development efforts that we can work together on in solving problems that are of a global magnitude. The relationship that we share together, CSU and CDC, is, is truly a flagship example of uh, academic and, and federal collaboration. It's productive, it's personable, it's professional, and we've seen tremendous uh, gains come out of this. CDC has a world reference collection of, of arboviruses, of viruses transmitted by arthropods. Um, and so, so one way that, that CSU has been able to, to add some depth to the, to the laboratory investigations with the CDC is to, um, to sequence a lot of those, those arboviruses. Um, so with the intent that um, if there's an outbreak to occur, we would be able to shorten the time to identify that pathogen and respond to it. There's a great opportunity here and a great um, platform for working together to address these issues. Not just simply when we are addressing the emergency at hand, but also when we're preparing for the next emergency that's not come yet. 
We have also the facilities that are present in the regional biocontainment lab. That's part of a network of 13 laboratories located across the United States that have facilities, training, and procedures in place to allow handling of biosafety level three type agents. So that researchers who have the need to study or the desire to study these particular agents have places they can go to do that safely and, and in a way that complies with all the necessary regulations. One of the foundational installations at the IDRC is the Bioenvironmental Research Building with associated BSL-3 lab spaces, media preparation facility, and discovery suites. Connected to that, you'll find the Rocky Mountain Regional Biocontainment Laboratory, which was granted select agent status from the CDC. The Research Innovation Center next door provides business incubator space for bringing innovations to market. Our partners can make use of lab spaces that would otherwise be unobtainable. The university has also created Biomark, the Biopharmaceutical Manufacturing and Academic Resource Center. This brings high containment manufacturing capabilities to the IDRC, bridging the gap from laboratory to market. So Biomark is positioned well to empower CSU researchers, government researchers, or industry researchers who have got a great idea, who want to move this product forward, we can step in uh, and leverage the university infrastructure, leverage all of our experience, uh, take their product and say, okay, now we need to, to move it from that laboratory scale, that laboratory quality. Let's start thinking about what do we need to do to get it into humans. The IDRC offers a, a tremendous opportunity to bring together experts from academia, from government, from industry, um, and to really embrace um, research from, from across a broad spectrum. So it's sort of a state of mind that recognizes the importance of bringing together all of these experts and capabilities to be able to really tackle in the most efficient and productive way possible these important and ongoing threats. I mean, that's the ideal model is to be prepared and reaction, reacting before it becomes a problem. The challenges of infectious diseases in human and animal populations is a large one. By working together, we can find ways to lift everyone.